Jarvis, drop my needle. Okay, let's try this one more time. In the year 2099, many things change, but a few things don't. Enter the Spider-Man of Nuevo York. In Marvel's future, the time of heroes, known as the Heroic Age, comes to an end and no longer are superheroes saving lives. Instead, mega corporations have taken over. Created by artist Rick Leonardi and writer Peter David, Spider-Man 2099 made his debut in 1992 in the pages of Spider-Man 2099 number 1. Well, technically it was preview pages in Amazing Spider-Man 365, celebrating Spider-Man's 30th anniversary, but semantics. In the pages of Spider-Man 2099 issues 1 through 3, the origin of Miguel O'Hara is told our half-Irish, half-Mexican hero. Miguel was the son of an abusive father named George O'Hara and a loving mother, Conchata. Miguel also has a younger brother named Gabriel. Miguel was a problem child at times, but also a prodigy. As a teen, he was accepted into the Alchemex School for Gifted Youngsters and rose quickly to the corporate world. His mother did not approve. Neither did his brother Gabriel, especially after Miguel cheated on his own girlfriend, Zena, with Gabe's girlfriend, Dana. Kinda reminds you of early Tony Stark, huh? In the beginning of the story, we aren't really meant to fully love Miguel. Right off the bat in the comics, he's ignoring his family's phone calls, apparently hit his girlfriend Dana in the face, and he's proud to work for a soulless corporation. Not exactly Spider-Man material, you may think. Then again, like any other Spider-Man story, the heroes always seem to rise from the most unexpected places. As the head of the genetics program for the Alchemex company, Miguel wants to do what a lot of men with power want to do, create super soldiers, maybe even some with spider powers. For years, he's been working on a formula that might grant someone similar powers, and now the Alchemex Corporation was ready for Miguel to move on to human testing. And right there in that moment, that's when Miguel knew deep down, his formula was not ready for human trials, and the soul of a good man rose and spoke up. Miguel objected, but his superiors, Tyler Stone, CEO of Alchemex, and Aaron Delgado, Tyler's lackey that has been keeping an eye on Miguel's work, already picked a candidate to begin trials on. Most spider people in the multiverse have what is referred to as an Uncle Ben moment. This is the moment when an innocent person dies that catapults action within our hero so they can do all they need to protect the lives of people moving forward. Peter Parker could have stopped the man who killed his Uncle Ben, but he didn't. Gwen Stacy tried to save her world's Peter Parker, but she couldn't. Miles Morales watched his world's Peter Parker die, followed soon after by the death of his Uncle Aaron. In the future, Miguel fails to convince a man named Mr. Sims that the trials he volunteered for are not ready. Sims protests, causing Tyler Stone and Aaron Delgado to move forward with the testing. Miguel stays in hopes that he can make the trial a success. Spoiler alert, he can't. Mr. Sims gets the wrong injection of spider DNA and it mutates him into a hideous creature that soon drops dead. Feeling Mr. Sims' death weigh on his conscience, Miguel goes to Tyler Stone, handing in his resignation. But Stone doesn't accept. Instead, Stone injects Miguel with a highly addictive drug called Rapture. Stone then blackmails Miguel, saying that if he tries to quit or tell the world the truth, they won't believe him with the amount of Rapture in his body. It'll discredit him and ruin his life. This leads Miguel to act out of character, which is why, while still strung out on Rupture, he accidentally smacked his girlfriend Dana. Wanting to undo the effects of Rapture, Miguel and his AI assistant Lila come up with a possible solution. The early human DNA tests that were done in the lab with the spider DNA splicing were done with Miguel's blood. He believes with his DNA imprinting machine, he can imprint his old non-infected DNA into his body and overwrite his current DNA, thus eliminating the rapture in his bloodstream. Miguel enters his lab to give it a try, but Aaron Delgado sabotages the experiment and adds the spider DNA, hoping it would mutate Miguel like it did Mr. Sims and kill him as well. But that plan backfires quickly. Aaron Delgado falls to his death and Miguel O'Hara is reborn. Miguel partially mutates, growing sharp teeth, eyes that are sensitive to light, and claws on his fingers and feet. And when Tyler Stone learns that a person was successfully enhanced in one of his labs, he wants to know who it is and how he can blackmail them into working for Alchemex, or kill them and use their DNA to make others who will obey. Venture, an assassin for hire, is sent out to track this newly enhanced person. Realizing he's being tailed, Miguel causes some misdirection, leading Venture away from Miguel and his brother Gabe, who stop by for a visit. With a moment to collect himself, Miguel dons an expensive costume he purchased at the previous year's Day of the Dead festival. Made of unstable molecules like the old Fantastic Four used to wear, these are the only clothes Miguel owns that his new claws won't rip to shreds. With the help of the Thorites, which are a group of citizens of Nuevo York, 
that believe Thor will return one day, Miguel dons his costume, becoming Spider-Man. These hopeful but misguided citizens team up with Miguel to fight against Venture. Sadly, this does not give Miguel an upper hand, and he is captured by Venture and taken back to Tyler Stone. But before he could be delivered to Tyler Stone and meet face to face, he breaks free from Venture's capture. With the last of his strength, he's able to take down this hired assassin, solidifying himself as the first hero of a new heroic age. But Miguel's journey is far from over. More tales will be discussed as we track his journey from reckless youth to hero, to a man out of time, to working for Dr. Doom as his minister of supernormal, and finally as the hero that lifted Mjolnir to save the universe. All in good time, true believers. Thanks for watching this episode. Comment your thoughts down below and we will continue the discussion of Miguel O'Hara's comic book origins down there. See you all in the future. Peace.